Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how Knock Control works on Rust CFI. Here we can see a screen that's showing a running car with a slightly noisy knock sensor, but it'll still show you what to look for. Uh, so we're going to get this car running. You can see all the values are changing. I'm rubbing the car here a bit, and you can see that the knock level is moving around. Every time I rev it, the knock level goes up and then comes back down as it comes back to idle. Uh, with that, what we're seeing here is that uh, the knock sensor is a small sensor with a little microphone, basically a little microphone, and the more noise the engine makes, the higher the noise it get, that it gets registered on the knock level. Uh, this noise should go up with RPM, and it should go up slowly. So what we're looking for when you're knocking is that the knock level jumps like very quickly. You you don't see a slow transition. You can see that in a log too. But uh, let's keep seeing here on the video how it runs. So you have this knock filter fre frequency that is uh, the frequency that uh, so there is a knock frequency that uh basically it helps you zone in to the area that the engine makes noise and filters out the rest so you need to go to a website like uh, the formula.com slash knock frequency calculator i'll have the link in the description you write your piston diameter basically google the bore diameter for your engine write it into the knock calculator and it'll spit out the knock frequency and usually you write double the, the number here because of a bunch of stuff that was discussed in a bunch of forums. I'll put the links always in the description, but you can use the knock frequency that the calculator gives you or twice that frequency. And you write it here in the knock fre frequency, knock filter frequency in kilohertz. With this engine, it's a uh, 5 EFE, so it gave me a frequency of how much is that? 7.7 .7 kilohertz, and I multiplied that by 2, that's 15.4. And then this knock the tension the window start angle is the angle after firing the ignition, the after firing the spark plug, that you're going to start looking for knock, and then knock sampling duration is how many degrees of the crankshaft you're going to be looking at the knock sensor to try to register knock. You can you do this so it can know which cylinder it is and you can retard per cylinder instead of retarding all of them because you don't know what cylinder it is or maybe it's just some random noise. You don't need to be checking all 720 degrees of engine rotation for knock because there are moments that cylinders aren't firing. Uh, then you have the knock retard aggression. That's the amount of degrees it's going to remove in an instant when it starts knocking. And then the knock retard reapply rate is how fast the timing comes back on. So usually you need to pull a bunch of timing as soon as you see knock and then add it back at whatever rate you want. Usually you shouldn't take more than a half second to add all your timing back. But if you have really bad knock, since right now there's no long trim knock learning, then you could make the reapplication speed faster to get, I mean slower to get your timing retarded for a bit more time. So yeah. Now on the, here you have two columns, one's RPM and one's the threshold of what's considered knock. So you see that there's a gauge that shows you uh, how much noise is being currently registered well, you have to test by basically loading up the car and adding a bunch of timing. You have to test what is the point that there's a lot of noise that you need to filter out to, I mean, you have to decide. You have to look at the knock level at certain RPMs and see if the knock level in that moment is either the normal amount of noise that there is because the engine's noisy or if it's a normal noise due to knock and once your knock level goes over that threshold it's considered knock and it starts pulling timing until it doesn't see the until you're not over the noise threshold anymore 
So here I rode a few times and you can see that the knock level goes up but it doesn't go past the threshold. So you need to make sure that, see, when it goes over the threshold for a tiny bit, it'll get registered as knock and it'll pull timing. You can make it less sensitive, more sensitive or less sensitive. Right now I made it less sensitive and you can see that we're no longer pulling any timing. Now I can make it more sensitive again. I'm checking at the lower RPM to see if there's some knock at the lower end, but you can play around with this to make sure that you don't go over the, the threshold so you don't pull timing for no reason. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, you can see how I move around the knock sensing values and do a bit more tests. You can see how it pulls timing. You can see the timing change in real time when the knock's detected. Here I made it a bit more sensitive again and I see that it's making a lot of noise so I make it a bit less sensitive to see if I can have a more reliable knock detection. Now we can see that it's not going over the threshold because I know the car isn't knocking so anything that makes it noisier than that I can consider to be knock. Of course you'd need to do this on a dyno and induce knock and then look at where the knock level goes and adjust it for that. So yeah that's basically how knock on Rossi works and uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.